Hi. Congratulations Hello. on this. That yes. looks pretty cool. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost lunchtime. So when did you start working on the book, and how long did this take? Well, we officially about two years ago, but, you know, going back years, Shake Shack was born as a hot dog cart, you may not know, in 2001, with one vision, to raise some money for Madison Square Park. Quick walk from here. We had 11 Madison Park and Tabla across the street. 11 Madison Park, now named number one restaurant in the world. And we just thought, started making some hot dogs. And all of a sudden, people lined up, 50 people, 100 people lined up for our hot dogs. Three years later, the city came and said, why don't you make this hot dog cart permanent? And we built this 400-square-foot kiosk and called it Shake Shack in 2004, and here we are today. So this journey started 16 years ago, and we said two years ago, let's just tell the story of the book. And probably 10 times we canceled this whole idea. And, you know, we're a public company now, and our board of directors was like, you don't need this. Like, what are you doing? A book for us? What are you doing? And I said, no, it's important we tell the story of the people. And that's kind of what we did. It took us two years, and here we are. Oh, wow. I can't believe it got canceled so many times. I'm, I'm glad <laughs> well, it came through. Well, we thought, yeah. like, just recipes alone. I mean, the food is really fun to make. It's a little difficult to make at times, too. But we thought if we actually told the story behind Shake Shack and how we went from one Shake Shack to being over 130 plus all over the world, we're like, well, that's kind of interesting how this little hot dog cart went to that. So the recipes and the stories together, we thought that was something that people would love to hear about and read about. And I like, you know, Shake Shack now we know is so successful, but I like that you even said that it's the first three years you're operating at a loss. And even when you tried to switch to fresh fries, you lost a million dollars. You you described those those tr troubleshooting and those failings as well in some sense. Why was that important to you to be transparent? We really needed the book to be the story. That's why we call it Recipes and Stories. It, it's the journey of a lot of business lessons we learned. So it's not like part business book, it's part story book, and it's part yummy food book. Um, I don't think there's anybody, maybe, but I doubt there's going to be anybody who says, I'm not going to Shake Shack today because I'm going to cook Shack burgers at home. So we kind of made it for that crowd of people who, if there isn't a Shack in your neighborhood yet or you just can't get there, you can cook it up. But really, I think you'll find it's just a fun read. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been, you know, had some good critical uh, writing about the book and just about the journey of this crazy story of how we are now in 13 countries around the world and... Uh, how Shake Shack just resonates with people for some reason. How many locations total? I think 134 as of yesterday. That sounds about right, yeah. That's, crazy. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. All we wanted to do was make a nice hamburger for people. So let's be clear. <laughs> there was never supposed to be a second, ever. Yes. And for people who are cooking from it, uh, how did you, you keep certain recipes a secret, specific blend of beef, yeah. the sauce. How did you strike a balance between you know, keeping those secrets, but also creating recipes that people can get close to at home. What we wanted to do was get you as close as possible. Now, what we're actually doing at Shake Shack is a very time-consuming work. A lot of the recipes have so many ingredients. Some are very hard to source. And we didn't think that would be fun for the home cook to have to say, okay, I need to have this mail order to my house to make shack sauce. We wanted to give you a quick way of getting there that was going to be delicious. But more importantly, we wanted to give you the knowledge of how to create a great burger at home, how to develop your own sauce, the ideas of balancing flavors. We thought that was important too. So for the guest that wants to buy the book and actually make the Shack Burger, we're going to get you incredibly close. But what we're hoping at the end of the day is you're actually going to take these ideas of how to create your own blend of beef, how to properly cook it, and then how to create different condiments to make it excellent. We thought that was really uh, exciting to share too. I remember when we started talking about the book, we said, what do we really want this to be? And we both kind of came up and said, remembering, you know, Mark started his career cooking at Gramercy Tavern. That's so much of the story of Shake Shack is this fine dining group, myself working with Danny Meyer for 18 years. Um, and we said, what do we want this book to be like? And our, one of our favorite books ever was when Tom Colicchio did Think Like a Chef. And it wasn't about the recipes. It was about how to think about cooking. Mm -hmm. and, and when you read Mark's sections of the book, you really, you know, think like a burger maker. And he tells you how to think about how to cook. So it's, it's more about that education and less about the actual recipe. But that said, yes. we will go to the grave with the shack burger and shack sauce recipes. <laughs> we just give you some fun ways to make something close enough at home. Okay. Yeah. And you do have, you, you have such an emphasis on the purveyors that make Shake Shack what it is and encouraging people to seek out their local purveyors and ingredients that they can find. 
I really liked that. Yeah, yeah. every time we open a Shake Shack, we live by one motto. It's called the bigger we get, the smaller mm-hmm. we have to act. That's in the book. Uh, it's, it's hanging in my office, and I remind everybody of that. And that means, you know, Mark, you may know, last night was in Tokyo, uh, and Seoul days before that. So he hasn't slept in about a week. Uh, and what is Mark doing when he's there? He's going around the world, around every neighborhood, whether it's Lexington, Kentucky, where we opened a couple weeks ago, or the West Loop in Chicago, or in Korea, and finding the best chocolate, the best baker, the best tomato, um, and and still applying it to the core menu. We're not trying to be anything more than Shake Shack's core menu, but it should feel like Shake Shack, but taste like that city. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge part of Mark's job, and, and he does that, uh, something that no one else can do but him. We always like to say that, who said, like, uh, all of the uh, links in a chain have to be identical? And for us, I mean, people love us for our burgers and fries if they've experienced them here in New York City. And when we go to a different city or a different country, people are always asking, is it the same as New York? And we definitely want to deliver upon it, but then at the end of the day, we're born out of fine dining. We're just a bunch of foodies ourselves. So when we go to like a new country... It gives us a chance to kind of reach out, find different flavors that inspire us, and then bring them into Shake Shack and try to reflect back a little bit of the culinary heritage of that city that we find uh, really unique. So they all taste a little different, but that's based on the city, and we think that's really exciting. Yes. Do you have a personal favorite of any of the one-off items that you've done locally? There's, there's been so many over the years that have been really uh, outstanding, but I think probably the first two that come to mind in Austin, Texas... We work with an amazing uh, restaurant there called Uchi, and they developed us a uh, miso blondie with smoked huckleberry jam. Oh. And that's a mix we use for one of our concretes. It's just so good. It's just that and vanilla custard, and it's amazing. And then fast forwarding to Tokyo, uh, I just fell in love with black sesame puree. So a lot of our concretes have that laced into it, as well as we do a black sesame milkshake that's only available in Tokyo. That sounds so good. (laughs) And you do tease, you have, you have new recipes in the book. You talk about testing out a spicy shack sauce. There's chicken fingers. I know that a recent development was you're finally offering breakfast at the Madison Square Park location, which you had initially tested f- at first and hadn't worked, right? Well, if you look yeah. back, you know, people don't, rem- don't remember these days, but in the first few years of Shake Shack, we closed in the wintertime. And I remember Danny Meyer and I got in this big argument. He was saying, no, it's got to be like baseball season. It needs to stop, go away, and come back. That's what makes Shake Shack great. Now, yeah. I don't think so. Like, I think we could stay open all year. Let's do this. And that first winter, we lost a bunch of money, and it was a mess. And then that next, so, so we did breakfast in one of those seasons in October, and then we closed. That next season in April, we opened. And that was the year that whatever happened, I think it was 2007, popped. That was when Shake Shack was like, oh, my God, this thing is busy all day, every day. When that happened, we couldn't handle breakfast, so we pulled it. Okay. And then we've only done it at the uh, airports and train stations. But we said, you know what, Madison Square Park, what is Shake Shack ultimately? It's a place where people gather. Madison Square Park might be one of the greatest places in the country to gather with people. So why not give them a reason to gather in the morning? Great Stumptown Coffee. We teamed up with our buddies at Daily Provisions, uh, and they're making a coffee cake with fruit only sold at at this shack, uh, and then you can just get a killer egg, bacon, egg, and cheese, or sausage, egg, and cheese. It's really fun. Classic New York sandwich, too. Totally. <laughs> so, how many new menu items do you think we'll see over the next decade? I saw, you know, I, I noticed in Danny's, they show a Danny's original business plan in the book, and there's donuts written on there. There's a tuna burger, um, but I know that you really take your time, as you showed with the fries, to to very slowly implement new items. I think a great example of that is our chicken sandwich, which we launched last year. I mean, that was probably a good two years of us slowly developing and trying to trying to create something that we felt really amazing about because if it's going to go on the menu and sit shoulder to shoulder to the Shack Burger, it's going to be amazing at the end of the day. So it takes us a lot of time to develop stuff like that, and we're always playing around with different ideas because we just get excited about food. We're talking about new ways of cooking and Different our, items. Our rule is it just has to be craveable. Yeah. If it's craveable, it belongs on the menu. But we're not going to be like one of these companies that the menu just grows, 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 grows. It's mm-hmm. got to. We put stuff on. It's awesome, and then we yeah. take it away. And people are bummed out sometimes. But we have the confidence to believe the next thing is going to be even better. So you'll see some new stuff from us for sure okay. as the years go on. For sure. That's good to know. And you've really helped pioneer this model. And I think. So many chefs and entrepreneurs, they all want their own Shake Shack. And we've seen some 
concepts, whether it's salad or poke or pizza with Mark Ladner's place about to open up. Um, it's quite amazing. What advice do you have for people who are looking to get into fast casual or fine casual? Um, and what do you think is being done right and wrong in that market? Well, I think there's a misnomer that just even if you're a fine dining talented chef that mm -hmm. it's just easy to make money just because you charge less um so i think people need to be cautious I think the reason shake shack became 134 locations mm -hmm. is because all we did was want one we wanted mm -hmm. one it was not created to have two or three or four or anything ever than that and that passion and that sincerity about what we did at that first one has given us the your true organic and sincere growth that's gotten us here. So everybody who's thinking that way, I think we're in a moment where people want much less of the trappings of fine dining and the, the sit down and the servers. It, that exists and is better than ever. But more and more and more, we can get great food at a great price really mm -hmm. quickly and easily. Now, you know, even now we have the Shack app. You can, you don't even have to wait online at Shake Shack anymore. I didn't know why that. anyone does. Yeah. Just take out your phone and order. You want to order at uh, one o'clock? We'll see you at one o'clock. It's there and ready for you. I think that's going to happen more and more and more and more. So I think w what people need to do today is make sure they are giving amazing ingredients with a sincere purpose that is not meant to be built so you have a hundred of them. Meant yeah. so the one is awesome. It should be like uh, looking at saying, I'm opening a restaurant, not a, uh, a new concept where I'm going to have a lot of them down the road. It's like, I want to make this just the best possible restaurant I can create at a good price point. Then we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, it's the word concept. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's so different. It's looking at it on the onset, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So do you think this will be the definitive Shake Shack book, or will we see another in another 10 years? You know, it's funny. Some of our uh, our partners and things that we've wrote to, uh, and as I inscribed the book, I've said, you know, let's make enough stories that we can write a second book. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. Gosh, uh, who knows? I mean, this, this is... It's, this is not about money. This is about telling the story, and it's been super fun for us. So if we're lucky enough to keep building more Shake Shacks, and that equals a second book worth of stories, you bet we'll write it for you. Yeah. The amount of just the way the book captured the humans of Shake Shack was so beautiful, and I know that that community will only continue to grow. So on that note, we'll open it up to the audience for questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I just had one of your um, chocolate shakes, you know, uh, made my $2 donation uh, for No Kid Hungry. All right. You going to have any more charity stuff um, over time? That's a great question. It's so important how we do charitable work at Shake Shack, being that we were born for one purpose, to raise money for a park. Everywhere we go, we do that. So one of our concretes in every shack, uh, the team there chooses a local uh, charity to work with. Um, what you're referring to, if you haven't seen, is today it ends our Great American Shake Sale, where today we will have raised over $2.3 million for No Kid Hungry. Um, over the last five years, six years, and it's just been an incredible thing. So people come in and donate. You give us two bucks, we give you a five and a half dollar shake back. It's a pretty good deal, it's kind of a no brainer. So we're ending that today. We did that for this month, and the team does it. So we we love doing that. And what we tell our team is, you got to be the mayor of that town. We're not some chain. You you are. You need to be the neighborhood gathering place in your town, and take care of your community. You know. And if we take care of our team, then they can go ahead and do that. So you'll you'll see lots of that happening. And we've been so passionate about it that we don't only do it here in the States, but we also have a version of it in the UK, in Tokyo, and Moscow. We try to bring it everywhere we can. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Hello. Uh, on behalf of everybody that I know, uh, thank you for making quality food <laughs> for, like, for a long time. Um, throughout the... I know that Shake Shack has done many promotions in the past, and... Uh, I was wondering, what was one of your cra uh, craziest promotions that you've ever done for, for the business? Because I remember going to the, the Wall Street uh, thing that happened like two years ago where there was given like a lot of free burgers, and that was a great memory. Yeah, the day we, <laughs> was, the day we went was public, for everyone. it was freezing, and it was January. <laughs> we took over the New York <laughs> Stock Exchange, and we shut it down, and we were giving out free burgers all day as part of the IPO. That was wild. Uh, yeah. There's been so many. It, one fun one that I like in the book was uh, we talk about the peanut butter bacon burger. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. One day, our chief operating officer, Zach, was eating a burger at the shack, and he's like, you got to try this peanut butter and bacon. I'm like, dude, that's gross. Like, you can, what do you mean, peanut butter and hamburger? <laughs> and, uh, he, and I tried it, and I was like, oh, my God, we got to do this. 
And so the next week, we ordered up all this bacon and peanut butter, and we ran it for one day. And funny, this goes back to Danny Meyer was in Italy at the time researching Maialino, our Italian restaurant. And we're doing this, and he's in Italy, and he sees some social media about it, and he calls me, and he's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, peanut butter, this is not a joke. Like, you gotta, we got to be serious here. And I said, Danny, we sold out in the first hour. <laughs> and he and I, we had a good laugh about that, and it was a lot of fun. We ended up doing it again. Yeah. So, like, we love just doing one-off stuff where we make no money on that stuff, and we just do it for one day. We give a lot of the money away, a lot of charitable things, often with, with chefs like uh, Dominique Ansel. We did a cronut pop-up one day. Mm-hmm. So we love just creating madness for really no good reason and then yeah. just be moving on. I think one of my favorites will always be our 10 year anniversary. We threw a huge party in New York city at our original shake shack in the park, in Madison park. And we did a different chef every day for five days. Everyone from uh, David Chang to Daniel Ballou to uh, Daniel Hume of 11 Madison park. And I felt like all of New York descended upon us over those five days. We had massive lines that wrapped around the park twice. Maybe I've heard as long as a six hour wait to get one of these limited edition burgers, but Again, we were just so honored that New York came out, and it was fun to do something special for our fans. One more? Yes. Hi, guys. Hey. Um, so I, like everyone else here, is a big fan of Shake Shack. But Thank you. Um, what would you order if you went to a Shake Shack right now? That is so hard, and people ask us that all the time. I, you know, what's changed for me is now I order the Chicken Shack every time, and I always have to bring a friend because i got to also have a cheeseburger. So... <laughs> But, like, so I, 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 I have a hard time not ordering the chicken now. I think it's just such a good chicken sandwich that we created. And uh, so I'll get that cheeseburger, definitely a bacon cheese fries, and a, usually a black and white shake is my order. It's a solid order. It's, it's okay. um, I got to go I'm work out. I got to go that one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually these days have been going for our Chicago dog because, as we were saying earlier, we actually start off as a hot dog car. And ever since then, when we opened Shake Shack, the burgers have just taken off. And I always want to remind myself about the hot dog car. At the end of the day, it's so delicious with the balance of all the different flavors on top of it that that, that's been my recent go-to. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thanks to everyone for coming out. Thanks, Sierra. Congrats on the book. (laughs) 